In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this Nikon FE 35mm film SLR camera equipped with the 50mm f1.8 lens. And as I'm preparing this camera for sale, I thought I would just check it over here on video, doing all the things that I would want to do if I were looking at this camera in person and had the opportunity to check it over. So, um, in addition to showing the condition of this particular camera, this guide could show you what to look for if you're out looking at a camera like this and want to quickly assess its condition. So in order to do that, I have a couple of batteries and I'm going to put those in. Uh, a nickel is a good key to get this battery compartment open. It fits the slot very well. So we're just going to unscrew that and then we're going to pull the battery holder out and load these batteries in just like that. The smooth side to the top and then put that right in there. And I always like to back this up until I hear a little click so that I know there, so the threads are for sure engaged properly and there's no danger of cross-threading. And then just tighten it up. It doesn't have to be real tight, but you want it you want it snugged up. There, okay. So then on this camera, to check that the batteries are in and they're good, there's a little battery check lever right here. And if we pull that down, we can see the little red light comes on. So we know that that's good. This, uh, this camera has as the on off switch is the film advance lever. We just pull that out and reveal that little red circle right there. Now the camera is on. And what I thought I'd do is let's just set it on auto here. Okay, I'm going to set this on something like well, let's uh, let's pick F4 there. Now <clears throat> We are going to let the, uh, the camera decide the uh, shutter speed. And pointing the camera right here with this light right here. Oh, I should say, let's, let's first thing set this uh, ASA value all the way down to 12. We do that by pressing this little button here and set that way down to the slowest ASA speed that we have. Now, with the light right here, and we've got the shutter cocked and it's ready to go. Okay. Kind of a long shutter speed, but we have it set real slow. But now what we're going to do is advance that film advance to cock the shutter again. But we're going to shut off this light. So now there's a lot less light entering the front of the camera. So the meter should uh, recognize that with a much longer exposure and certainly was much longer. And just to test that out again, let's again leave the camera in the same orientation and turn off the other light. Now my digital camera has adjusted to the lighting conditions here and now should be a very long shutter speed. Very long indeed. Very, very, very long. Well, this is almost getting ridiculous, but there, it finally completed. Now, again, with the camera in the same orientation, I'm going to cock that one more time, and now I'm going to set the ASA speed, which could also be uh, more commonly known these days as ISO, at the high end of 3200. And now let's listen to the shutter speed. Much faster again. So, through this testing we know the meter is responding to light. It considers what the ASA is set to. So, all the electronics seems to be functioning. Let's, uh, let's try uh, stepping down through these shutter speeds. Now I have to push the button to get it off auto. And now we're at one one thousandth of a second. And so here we go. 
one five hundred, one two fiftieth, one one twenty fifth, one sixtieth, one thirtieth, one fifteenth, one eighth, one quarter second, one half second. Feel how nice that film advance works. That's really nice. One full second. Now this camera even has some more. There's a two full second, a four full second, which is really quite long, and then an extremely long eight second exposure, which, uh, well, we'll see it here. Okay. And then it also has an M90 and a bulb setting, and these are designed to work even if there are no batteries in the camera. So if your batteries go dead, you can always at least get a 90th of a second, or you can do something with the bulb setting. And so, and the bulb setting just keeps the lens stopped down to whatever it's set at, and uh, shutter open as long as I hold the button down. Okay, so all that seems to be working well. Those shutter speeds all sounded about right to my trained ear. Um, here is the the film or the uh, aperture um, stop down button, and we can see that the lens stops down properly with that. Let's uh, try the self timer. In order to do that, we just rotate that down about a quarter turn, advance that, and here. We'll watch, I saw the lens stop down, the mirror flips up on this camera, and then it uh, completes the cycle. Okay, and that worked well. So now, uh, let's take the lens off, and I'm just going to set the lens aside for a moment while we look at the camera itself. An important thing to look at is this aperture follower. This is how the uh, camera knows what the aperture is on the lens, so we want to make sure that's sprung properly, and it is. That works really well. We're going to look here inside the, uh, the mirror box. I'm going to set it at a longer shutter speed so we can see what's going on here. You can see right back to the, uh, the pressure plate in the back of the camera, so that was all looking good right there mirror works well, no strange noises or anything. So then let's look at the lens itself. Um, let's see. Focus is nice and smooth. The aperture ring, let's see if I can work that, has nice detents and clicks. And if I set that at f22 and we work the little lever in the back we can see quick and snappy aperture blades. Looking in there, I do not see any oil on the blades from either front or back. They all work nicely. And if we open that wide up to f1.8 and we take a bright LED flashlight and point that in the back, I see some dust and real minor stuff kind of light up, but it, it, I do not see any kind of heavy fungus or anything. There might be some slight haze. I, I don't know how well things are showing in the video. I'm tipping it up to look at directly myself. I see some, some stuff in there, but it doesn't look very severe. After looking through lots of lenses, this, there's something, but it's not really bad. Uh, let's mount this back on the camera. That works well. You'll note this lens also has this uh, piece here for catching the prong on cameras like the old uh, Nikon F2 where there was a prong up here that communicated rather than this, uh, this part down here that engages with that. Okay, so let's uh, look at the top here. Uh, You've got your exposure compensation ability right here. You just lift up on this and watch that little red marker go from zero to plus two to minus two. And I can turn it through the whole motion. I'll set it back at zero. 
and as we saw a little bit earlier you push this little button here and then rotate this whole dial against the pointer here for the ASA value and we saw that that did actually work uh, for the uh, for the testing so I'm going to just leave it at 200 since that's a common setting on the back of the camera it, it looks really nice I did look through the viewfinder and it looks pretty good the uh, the meter works the the uh, when this is turned on the little needle moves up according to the light conditions and if we on this one to open the back you actually have to work a little lever right here as you pull up on the film rewind crank and then the door opens so now let's uh, let's just look in here we'll watch the shutter act go a few times I've got it set for one of the longer settings and the film advance we can see over here that's all working well and then when you're actually rewinding the film there's a little button down here that you push and when that's pushed then you want this to be able to spin the other way which it does so you can rewind the film so everything there seems to be working well if we go over here to the film door the pressure plate looks nice um, feeling along the door edges I don't feel much residue on there or on the top just a little but I would say the light seals are not a real problem on this camera yet they, they usually uh, if there if there's a lot of stuff stuck on the edges you'd want to think about replacing it but uh, I think this is probably okay there's some foam here in the corner that feels kind of dry and dusty so at some point you probably want to do the light seals but it doesn't look like something that needs to be done right away door closes properly nice nice rewind crank with a metal crank that lifts up so uh, works well and so the, uh, the camera comes with this lens cap and there is a fitted case this is not an official Nikon case it is just a uh, some aftermarket case that's obviously made for this model because it just fits perfectly so I'm going to just hook these little little strap holders here over the strap lugs on each side and snap those and then this this part folds up over around the whole camera like that and so the case has some marks on it and a little bit of wear, but it certainly is uh, is uh, good. Oh, actually, it says from an Ulta XD XGM. It would certainly fit this camera well too. It's what was with it when I got it, so that's where it goes. And then we have the owner's manual for the Nikon FE, and the manual. I mean, it's got a few. And it's got some wrinkled corners and some bends and folded over corners and things but all the information is there and it, it looks pretty good so um, that is a nice overview of this Nikon FE 35 millimeter film SLR camera um, tested over to the extent that we can here without actually running any film through it, but everything checked out pretty good.